Hola amigos, hola amigas, welcome, bienvenido, croissu y salam, welcome to the channel, y'all, chest, niak, shimash, this car, the FSO Polonaise, or as the turtle, my friend Julian calls it, this car, in its colour, has a huge connection to my childhood, because I've mentioned before in the Morris, Marie, um, the, um, sorry, the Avenger that I did. That was my uncle's first car. This was my uncle's second car, was the FSO Polonaise. In exactly the same color as well. I was so happy to be able to get hold of this model. Uh, I got it on eBay and it came from abroad. Didn't pay too much for it. So unfortunately I have to break the packaging to get into it. That doesn't matter. Right, let's take this model out. I'm going to give it a little bit of a wipe over because there's a there's some marks on the top and there's that orange blob, so I'll do that off camera. Okay, I've given it a bit of a freshen up. Let's put it on the display. And there we go, in all its glory. So there we go, that is the orange FSO Polonaise that my uncle used to own. Now, I was about six years old at the time, and back then you don't really, well, I didn't sort of like really pay much attention to if it was a rubbish car or a good car or reviews or, or that malarkey. That's all I saw was my uncle had this big orange car and I loved the big chunky bumpers on it. I thought it was really awesome that it had that. The seats in it were really comfortable and he had it brand new and it was a it was a nice car back in the day when it was brand new. I remember going in it many times and it was really comfortable. The seats were really comfortable on it. Um, I can't really remember much about sort of like him actually driving it as to say, oh, yeah, this, that and the other and the engine and the clutch and all this malarkey and old technology, blah, blah, blah. But what I do remember is that when this was brand new, it smelt really nice, like a brand new car. And that was the first time I'd sort of experienced a brand new car smell. And we went loads of places in it because back then you had to sort of like get the mileage up for its first service. You had to break the car in back in those days, which you don't anymore. And um, so we'd have to get the mileage up on it. So we would... Um, go for runs in it with my mum. My uncle Raymond would come up and pick us up, chuck us in the car, and then we'd all go then for runs in the car just to get the mileage up, up and down the M4. Lots of fun, lots of fond memories. And there's a photograph of my sister and I standing next to it the day that he picked it up and brought it home. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was really fun. So this has a really fun, good, happy vibe to it that um, I remember a lot from my childhood and I love the four headlights I thought that was so cool
The second memory I have of this is when I was in college. Uh, not this particular model or colour. My friend Jamie had one. Uh, it was his first car. And um, everyone used to take the pee out of him because of it. Uh, it was a little bit old. It was his first car. And it was really, really, you know, it was quite reliable for him. Sometimes we'd go into town at lunchtime and we'd all pile in it and go down in it. And um, even then it was a lot of fun, even though it was a bit of an old banger by then. Uh, his car, not this one. And, um, yeah, so there's, there's fun memories of the FSO Polynes in my past, in my childhood. And then as I was older, when I was in college. So, yeah, lots of fun memories. Let's see if I can find out some information about this. The car's name comes from the Polish dance, the Polonaise, and was chosen through a reader's poll. The Polonaise was based on the Polsky Fiat 125P that, oh my gosh, I can't pronounce this, Fabrica Samochodo Osobuch, FSO, built under license from Fiat. The internal components, including modernised 1.3, 1.5 litre engines, pistons and carburetor, the chassis and other mechanicals were from the Polsky Fiat 125P, but the body was an entirely new lift-back body design in the early 1970s by Centro Stele Fiat as a new prototype of Fiat. After the Polish side started cooperation with Fiat over a new car, the original design was changed due to Polish requirements. The car was meant to be equipped with Fiat's 2-litre engines in the 1980s, but financial problems at the time made the purchase of a license from Fiat impossible. This is also why the 125P was produced simultaneously alongside the Polonaise for more than a decade. Moreover, mechanical modernization only took place when it could be applied to both cars. This situation finally changed after the production of the 125P ended in 1991. An advantage of the Polonaise is its passive safety. In 1978, it was the only Eastern European car built to pass US crash tests. Production was from 1978 to 1991, 1988 to 1992 for the pickup, 1983 to 1992 in Egypt, and 1990 to 1995 in China. It was assembled in Poland, Egypt, China and Thailand. In May 1978, mass production commenced. The official premiere of the FSO Polonaise 1500 and FSO Polonaise 1300 took place. The FSO Polonaise 2000 rally with a 2-litre Fiat DOHC engine was displayed. In 1981, the FSO Polonaise in an economy version was added. This was sold without black side rubbing strips between the front and rear wheel, chrome bumper strips, rear window wiper washer, fog lamps, luggage cover and rev counter. Plain vinyl was used on the seats and in the luggage compartment. At the other end appeared the top version FSO Polonaise 1500X. This was fitted with the AB 1.4 engine, a five-speed gearbox and a radio. It was sold in the domestic market, usually for US dollar payments. In 1989, the 89 FSO Polonaise appeared. The facelift, including a rear boot lid lowered to the bumper level, new rear lamps, rear window wiper washer placed horizontally, and side repeaters placed horizontally near the front doors. In January 1989, the first catalyzed Polonaises, 1500 only, were shown at the Amsterdam Auto Show. In 1990, the FSO Polonaise 2 SLE appeared, Fitted with Ford's 103 horsepower 2 litre engine, 12.5 seconds acceleration to 100 kilometres, and a top speed of 165 kilometres or 103 miles per hour. The FSO Polonaise suffered from relatively poor performance, except for those models equipped with the Fiat 2 litre and the Ford 2 litre engines. Polonaise parts were relatively cheap and readily available. After 1992, quality began to increase, especially after 1995, when DEU started its cooperation with FSO. Since 1997, the last production models, the Plus series, offered new features such as air conditioning. Production ended in 2002 after 24 years. 
the relatively low price of the Polonaise was seen as the main advantage over other cars, but demand slumped, and the last versions of the Polonaise produced were the truck versions, valued for their low price, reliability, and high load capability, up to 1,000 kilos, depending on the version. The Polonaise was a common sight in Central and Eastern Europe, particularly in its home country of Poland. For many years, the Polonaise has been a popular choice for participants in the Zlombol charity rally. In 2018, around 300 teams, 40% of all teams, used different versions of the Polonaise in this event. I find it really funny because you can still see these. If you watch some of the dash cam uh, accident crash videos, um, <laughs> in Poland and other Eastern European countries, you do often see a Polonaise getting smashed by something and it just clouds of orange rust dust and um, crumples like a piece of paper uh, compared to cars of these days. But um, it was really nice to do the video on this because it brings back a lot of uh, fun memories. And I have mentioned when I've worked with um, other Polish people before <laughs> and I mentioned this and they sort of like what really <laughs> a lot of them didn't realize that they were even sold in this country but um, yeah they were thankfully and this orange polonaise will be in my memory for the rest of my life as a very very fun car to see and to um, to be in so yeah I'm really glad I was able to share this model, find the model first of all, and share this model and information with you. I have had a look and one of the windscreen wipe, uh, uh, mirrors, it isn't actually missing, it wasn't on the model unfortunately, and it's not in any of the packaging or anything. Um, it was only, if you look at the packaging, there's only got a bump on one side of it, but uh, I'm positive that my uncles did have two uh, wing mirrors on it. But there we go. So that's my little take on the FSO Polonaise. I hope you've enjoyed. It's been fun to make. And um, there are still many of these on the roads around the, uh, around the world. So it's been a lot of fun to share this with you. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, guys. And I'll see you for the next episode. Bye, y'all.